Every year, Apple unveils their brand new Mac chip. And today is no different. Today we have two of the M4 Max variants, one being the 14 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and over here we have the 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU. Now, the real question is, can you really tell the difference between the 14 core and the 16 core for not only just benchmarks, but for everyday tasks such as video editing, browsing the web, and even some Xcode development? And today, I want to hopefully answer those questions and maybe convince you that you either might need this or you might not be able to step down to some of the other chips. And with that being said, let's dive in. So for our core breakdown in our M4 Max 14 versus the 16 core, on the 14 core, we get 10 performance cores and four efficiency cores. And on the 16, we get 12 performance cores and four efficiency cores. So again, you're getting two more performance cores in the 16 uh, core variant. And before we start any of our benchmarking, I just wanna make sure we go ahead and change our power profile essentially in, in Mac OS. So as we know, the Mac chips always get a special feature that the other chips do not, and that's being able to put it in high power versus low power mode. And if I'm buying the Max device or Max chip, um, I wanna make sure and ensure that I always have the most power that I can get, whether I'm on battery or plugged in. And I'm gonna change both of these to high power just so we have to get consistent results and get the most out of our device. And with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into our first actual benchmark, and that's gonna be with Geekbench. So let's head over there. All right, we've already ran into one of our other differences i guess minor differences that we see at first and that is being that the 16 core variant is actually a 0 0.01 gigahertz boosted higher or base clock is boosted slightly higher um so yeah with that being said let's go ahead and get the cpu benchmark run and let's kick them right. off our geek bench tests are done and we got some good numbers all right so on the 12 core we have a single core score of 3937 and I mean sorry on the 14 core we have 3937 and on the 16 core we have 3976 and then on the uh, the multi core we have 23138 on the 14 core and 25941 so it doesn't seem like you're getting a huge difference in multi core uh, I mean being that you do get two more extra performance cores but um, you're getting about a 12% uplift at least based on these benchmarks. All right, our Geekbench tests are done and we got some crazy scores. So to start on our 32 core GPU uh, variant, we have 160,266. And on our 40 core GPU, we have 187,007. So just to reference, our M4 Pro from yesterday with the 20 core GPU, we got about 98,000 around that number. Um, so it's good to see that these numbers are going up linearly and that they are scaling correct. All right, our uh, Xcode benchmark is complete. So on our 14 core CPU, uh, we got a score or it compiled it in a minute or 106 seconds. So that's about well, a minute and 36 seconds versus a minute or 103 seconds um, on our 16 cores. So what I will no note is that during our tests, we got a bunch of fan speed on our 14 inch, but not our 16 inch. So it seems like the 16 inch is gonna keep it a little bit cooler. Um, it is a little bit hot to the touch, but the RPMs on the fans did not reach anything higher than like 2600, maybe 3000 RPMs and you couldn't hear it at all, versus we had like 6,500 RPMs on our 14 inch, 14 core CPU. Um, so definitely something to notice there, and I'll make sure I include the sound clips for that as well. We're gonna hop into Cinebench and get a more, um, I guess, realistic stress test to see how much those fans really ramp up, what our CPU scores can be, and just what the power draw is during these tests. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our Cinebench tests running and uh, see what the results are. <laughs> Holy cow, guys, we are getting some crazy fan speeds right now. So they're both at 100% fan speed. This is going to be the, uh, you know, the 14 core CPU.
and this is the 16 core CPU. So I don't know if you can tell that, I don't know if you can hear it from here, um, but it is, it is actually quite loud. I'll try to make it to where it's easier to, to hear it from like the distance in which you would type. Uh, but we're getting, uh, I think I've seen it peak at 105 degrees on the CPU on both of them. It looks like it's thermal throttling a little bit. It looks like it's trying to cool down. Um, C yeah, CPU temps drop to about 100 and the CPU fans are at about 75 to 80% except for on the 14 core. It is still kicking. Um, so maybe the... Yeah, so we hit 105 again on the 16 core. So we'll just see how this the scores turn out, but it does look like we're getting a little bit of um, too hot for the device. All right, after that exciting multi-core test, we have all of our results, both our multi-core and our single core. So for the multi-core on the uh, 14 core, we have 22,836. And for the single core, we have 2,190. Now, if we swing over here, to the 16 core, we have uh, 27,464 for the multi-core and single core we have 2,224. And I know I said this was going to be the last uh, stress test, but with that, with all that just happened, I, I've got to see exactly how um, 3D Mark does with this with these devices just for the fact that it will actually show us a graph if there's any um, slow down or thermal throttling that the, the device may experience. So let me go ahead and get that installed and set up and let's make that our final benchmark before we head over to Blender and Final Cut. Alright guys, we got the Steel Mo Nomad Light stress test set up and I am going to hit start and just see if there's any thermal throttling and if there is, I mean I'll show the results um, if there's anything alarming. If not, I'll just throw up a, a chart and we can All just... Right. So our stress test is done and as you can, you can might be able to hear them but they're actually quite loud so to start on our 32 core gpu we got a best loop score of 11,375 and a, the lowest loop being 10,438 uh, with a 92 about a 92 percent stability so you could tell it did drop in terms of um, the performance it got at its peak but if you look over here at the 40 core gpu um, you'll notice that the best loop score is 14,167 and then the lowest loop score being 13,816 and the stability was about 97.5%. So that said, um, personally, I do think the 16 inch chassis is keeping it a bit cooler just for the fact that the RPMs on the fan is only going to like 5,000 at most, 5,500 maybe at the top end. But on the 14 inch, they're hitting like 7,800. Um, our, it was sucking so much wattage. It was like 87, I believe, on the 14 inch that our we had 30% battery before we started the test and we ended up dropping to nine on like uh, loop six of 20. And on the uh, 16 inch, we were pulling 136 watts, I believe, peak, um, which is it's just kind of crazy uh, that it's actually pulling that much. I had, actually had to plug them in mid-test. Um, otherwise, it was not going to make it. Um, the hottest core, it seems like we got, what, 107 uh, on both of them, I believe, maybe 105. Yeah, 107 on both of them. Fans were at 100% the whole time. Uh, but, yeah, so it looks like the 16-inch the held up. They did pretty good. They, but they, they were crazy loud, though. So um, hopefully I was able to capture that and display that to you guys um, the best as I can. Um, and with that being said, let's head into our final two tests, and that being Blender. All and right, now cut. for this, we're going to do our um, BMW render scene, and we're going to see exactly how fast each of them handle um, handle this is the CPU, and we'll, then we'll do the GPU next. All right, so our Blender CPU test is done, and on the uh, 14 core, we got a score or a time of a minute and 37 seconds. And on our 16 core, we got a minute and 21 seconds. So now let's head over to our uh, GPU test and see um, how big of a difference that makes. All right, our GPU blender test is done. We got 40 seconds on the 32 core and 36 seconds 
on the 40 course. So it looks like minimal return in something this small, um, but definitely if it was a bigger uh, or longer render, it probably would have definitely had a bigger gap. So let's do our Final Cut Pro test and call it and wrap up with a summary. All right, so I have our Final Cut Pro here. What we're gonna do is export it in uh, ProRes first, um, just to use Apple's actual encoders. To, uh, honestly, I wanna see um, how it compares to yesterday, see if they got different encoders on the Max chip. Um, but let's see here, let's go ahead and get this. I just wanted to give a quick update in the video. I do say that they have different media encoders. They do not have different media encoders than the Pro chip. They just have dual media encoders, and I'll be sure to throw up a screenshot. Uh, but that explains why the times were basically cut in half on the X.264 render. Situated this. All right, uh, we're just going to name it that. We're going to put it in our downloads folder. And with that, we're going to hit start as soon as I hit save. Boom. All right, we got a minute and five seconds for our ProRes export. Now, let's see what we get on our X.264. Holy smokes, we just rendered that in two minutes and 41 seconds. And if you recall yesterday, or yesterday's video, or the last video I posted on the Mac Mini and the M4 Pro chip, it actually did it in four minutes and 30 some seconds. So we're definitely getting a set of new media encoders on this chip. Um, and I'm actually excited to see if the 16 core can do it even faster. So um, let me run that test and get back to you and then we'll wrap this up. All right guys, we're finally done with all our testing and the Final Cut Pro render was actually the exact same on the Mac. So the good thing is, is that the Max chip does get media encoders that are different than the Pro chips. Um, and at least that, I mean, even just a 10 minute clip, it shaves down about half our time. That is a crazy, crazy difference. Right, so let's discuss some of the things that you're gonna have to deal with if you're wanting to upgrade to the Max chip. One is that um, if you really want the extra GPU because it does scale linearly pretty, I mean, pretty good linearly, um, you're gonna have to spend an extra $500 to get that extra 40 core GPU just cause the, um, it starts at like $31.99. The chip is $300, but it also makes you just like $200 worth of RAM. So that's another thing you're going to take in consideration. And if you only want the 14-core uh, the CPU version, you can't upgrade the RAM. There's only 36 gigabytes of RAM. So that is another thing you're going to have to take in consideration. If 36 is fine with you, then you know, you'll know. Uh, but if you're wanting more, you're obviously going to spend 500 bucks on top of wanting an extra if you want. Uh, 64 or 128 um, so I do think that's kind of weird um, but it is what it is you know the Apple tax right um, but again if if you're someone that needs that extra horsepower the GPU specifically you can't go wrong with this, this is literally the top of the line you're going to get in a laptop of course you're going to get the loud fan speeds on something if you're doing some rigorous testing but that's to be expected with any laptop really um, but at the end of the day, hopefully I was able to make your decision easier uh, based on all the test results I have, you know, obviously provided. And again, uh, if you find it helpful, make sure you hit that like. Comment on if this is the device for you or if you're going to go down to the MacBook Pro. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.